Today we're talking about opportunity zones. Um, I know there's not a lot of investors, or actually, put it this way, most of the investors I run with um, are not involved in the opportunity zone for uh, one reason or the other. They're not taking advantage of this, probably because it's not a quick hit, something that everybody can do anytime they want to. You actually have to invest your time, knowledge, get some education here, um, network with some people. Uh, and But if you do that, it is extremely lucrative. And you're also going to be able to further the other sides of your business because it just it just feeds off of everything. It just it just if you get investors who are doing tax deals with you and you can show them how they can make money on other deals, uh, it just puts you in a whole different stratosphere. So uh, just to let you guys know, my name is Barry Cunningham. I am a real estate investor and burgeoning real estate developer here in South Florida. So today, I we got this started was I saw a video on the news this morning um, where the Council of Economic Advisors released some information about the opportunity zones and where things were headed. And it caught my eye because I've been talking a lot here about the opportunity zones uh, here in Florida, actually South Florida, and I've been focusing mostly on Delray. Then I spoke to somebody at the Opportunity Zone office in Delray and they pointed me to some other resources which just blew the doors off. I mean, I just couldn't believe what I had found. I am so psyched. We may even move to Fort Lauderdale because of what I've been seeing. We, we, I, I cut my teeth on real estate in the Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale area. Um, there's an area of town called Coral Ridge, um, also, you know, Oakland Park, Wilton Manor's all through that area. And then there's a, another area called uh, Poinsettia Heights and uh, Progresso that, you know, were big areas for me uh, back during a boom. And now these areas, I find out, are opportunity zones. I mean, these are areas that I know by the back of my hand. I don't have to go look at a property. I can just check the zoning and see what was up and then move forward accordingly. I don't have to do as much research. I can move much quicker. Um, I just know this area very well. So after seeing the video on the news, I went to Twitter and as I always do in the morning, and I saw this on Twitter and it struck me. And it's because, again, we're in this weird situation where people are, are basically ticked off at people who are making money they're really pissed off because you have an opportunity to make money, an opportunity in the opportunity zone, and they don't seem to like it. I'm not, not sure why. Jealousy, envy, kind of the same thing, but just it, it strikes me as crazy. So I ran across this tweet this morning, and this is from the CEA, White House CEA, Council of Economic Advisors, and they say, new report, nearly 9,000 opportunity zones have been created since being enacted by POTUS, which lift approximately 1 million Americans from poverty. The first, the very first comment is from this guy, and I'm going to blow it up so you guys can see. Um, and he actually says people don't realize that opportunity zones do, do increase business in less buildable areas, but allows super rich to buy and build, then sell after 10 years and pay zero taxes. Again, pay zero taxes. People like us can't afford to be billed giving money to Kushner's people. So I saw that and I came back and went, this is a lie of ignorance. You don't have to be super rich to develop property in an opportunity zone. Myself and others I know are doing developments in OZs. Perhaps you should educate yourself a bit more on how the process actually works. He never came back. They, they seldom do. When you meet these idiots with knowledge, they run. So let's dissect what he says here. He says, people don't realize that opportunity zones do increase business in less buildable areas. True. But it allows super rich to buy and build, then sell after 10 years and pay zero taxes. So he kind of glossed over something here. In order to buy and build, 
the words for that are called invest. So there's an area of Fort Lauderdale called Sistrunk, where you can go to Sistrunk if you want to, but I wouldn't advise you to drive through or definitely not walk through at night. And now it's even much better than it was 15, 20 years ago. It's actually, you know, I'd go, I'd drive through it now, but I wouldn't advise many people to. You see, these areas didn't turn unbuildable overnight. These areas were, what you would say, have been blights on society for decades. So who's gonna go in and clean up these areas and build? Not this guy that was making his tweet. Not this guy that is complaining because he's not rich. And because he's not rich, he can't go in and build and buy and sell. He's not gonna go in there. So who's gonna go in there? Okay, I'll give you the answer. People with money who want to invest who look at a piece of, of, of property in a particular area of town and say, you know what? There might be some opportunity here if we go ahead and build something. Um, anybody else doing anything? No? Well, we found out about this opportunity zone. It might be a place where we can come in and build, which people like him think immediately gentrification. But gentrification is a, I'll say it, bullshit word. Because the opposite of gentrification is ghetto. The, op the opposite of gentrification is vacant land in a hood. You can't have an area be rebuilt without somebody with money coming in willing to invest. So why would somebody be willing to go into the hood, put their good money down, and help the community. What, 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 this isn't charity, this is business. What do you think happens? The government can't do it. If the government could do it, they would have done it. Obama was president for eight years. He could have done it. Clinton was president. He could have done it. The government's not going to do it. It's going to require private investment to come in and invest in these neighborhoods. So. How do you get someone to invest? I didn't say donate. How do you get someone to invest in any project? You guys have seen Shark Tank. You don't walk in and say, hey, listen, then, uh, I've got this widget, and it's going to be really good, and I need $200,000. Can you guys give me $200,000? That'd be great. No, it doesn't work that way. What they say is, I need $200,000, and I'll give you 20% of your, my company. I need 250000 and I'll give you 30% of my company. Nobody is giving away free money. These people who talk this crap are just pie-in-the-sky, communist, socialist dreamers who have no idea what the hell is going on. A deal is made by two parties or more parties who get together and say, I have something you want. I have something that you may want, and you come together and make a deal. Now, in the terms of the opportunity zone, what makes it really good, especially for somebody like me, is how in the hell would I raise 10, 15, 20 million dollars? Probably not going to happen. But now I have something these people are going to want. See, I, I go ahead and secure the property in a specific area. And I look to build, I don't know, maybe 50 units, 40 units, maybe some multi, you know, mixed use type property. And where am I going to come up the money to build it? And what am I going to do? Well, the Opportunity Zone says, here's what we're going to do. We like your idea. It makes sense, Barry. We're going to give you tax credits that you can sell for cash. What? Yeah, we're going to give you this stuff here. And then you could then go to the open market and say, hey, guys, I've got $10 million of tax credits. Who wants these? And then the people with money come in and go, yeah, that sounds good. Let me see your project. Let me see what you guys are going to do. That makes sense. I'll take those tax credits. Tax credits so that I can do my project. 
So it's not the super rich building. This guy doesn't have a clue. It's real boots on the ground developers who are able to access capital to build in areas that nobody else is building in. If you drive through Sistrunk, this didn't happen in the last three years. Didn't happen in the last eight years. Didn't happen in the last 10 years. <laughs> I mean, you, you can go back and look at old Sheriff Navarro episodes of Cops. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when it come for you? That was filmed in this area. It was filmed in that basically radius of, of Sunrise and, and Sistrunk and all downtown Fort Lauderdale when it was crap. And Sher Sheriff Navarro said, hey, Nick, Nick, Nick goes in and goes, we can clean this up. You guys can make a show. We'll get all these drug dealers and everything out of here. That was 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago. So you can't blame it on the last administration. You can't blame it on this administration. You can't, you, I mean, you're gonna have to go all the way back probably to Clinton and say, why, why are these hell holes, hell holes in Fort Lauderdale? Why are they there? Why, why, why is this not never been developed? You had the opportunity, you had the time. So when we get back, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what exactly, where these opportunity zones are. Your source for profit. Hear what you need to know to succeed in today's real estate market. Hey, thanks for checking out this clip of the Barry Cunningham Show. Every weekday, Monday through Friday, I talk about real estate and the trends and news that affect real estate and making money in real estate. So if you want to see us live, just go ahead and click the subscribe button below or just click the link below, which is going to be a link to the archives of all of our live shows. And then we'll go ahead and cut these up and get them out there so you can see the clips of the various shows. But in any event, I'm glad you're watching. Please continue to watch and have a great day. Get out there and make some money. And we'll see you on the next episode.